welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Many of our best writers have ventured into the world of the macabre. One of them was the man who knew 19th century India better than any other, Rudyard Kipling. Our story is an adaptation of At the End of the Passage. A man by the name of Hummel is assistant engineer in charge of building a section of the Guadahari Railroad Line. Every Sunday, three friends visit him in his shabby ramshackle cottage to play cards, gossip, and share a meal. In summer, the heat is sultry and oppressive. It is night, 101 degrees. Hummel seems to be possessed. With him is a doctor, a friend named Spursto. I gave you more for your Hummel. Uh, not enough, Spursto. I must have more. I can't sleep. I, I haven't slept for a week. I... I can't run fast enough. You, you what? Can't run fast enough? What does that mean? Shuba understands. My houseboy. If I sleep only a little, I... I can't run fast enough. Please, Presto. Morphia. So I can run. <laughs> mystery story, At the End of the Passage, by Rudyard Kipling, was adapted especially for Mystery Theater by Roy Windsor. It stars John Beale. It is sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. I'll be back shortly with Act... of England. 
The aristocracy takes good care to maintain their lavish scale of income. Oh, that'll do. Uh, so I'll give you three months' pay to have that gentleman spend a month with me and see how one fares with the independent native king. <laughs> The aristocracy. What rubbish. Uh, old Timbersides, the uh, king I have in mind, has three millions in jewels and coins under his palace, and the state of the people is enough to make you sick. Yes, and what can I do? Nothing. <laughs> Sooner be with you, Doctor. Oh, would you? <laughs> I don't think so. About 15 deaths a day, and the poor devils look at you as though you ought to save them. Lord knows I've tried everything. How do the cases run, generally? Very simply indeed. Chlorodyne, opium pill, chlorodyne, collapse, nitre, bricks to the feet, and then the burning gat. Aye, the level space at the head of the stairs leading to the river, where the bodies are cremated. And here we are, the aristocracy of England. Hmm. It was too bad about Mottram. We need a fourth for whist. Well, Hamill here is the lucky man. He has an actual roof over his head. <laughs> he sees one train a day. He has books, pictures, and the society of the excellent subcontractor Jevons. Uh, besides the pleasure of receiving us weekly. Uh, Jevons, there's an idea. Can't we dig him up, Hamill? Oh, yes, but uh, he wouldn't be much good to us. And it would be awkward. He, um, he passed on last Monday. Oh, I, I didn't know. But uh, it would be awkward to dig him up. Uh, you have a nasty sense of humor, Hummel. How did he die? By his own hand. Cholera and fever give a man a week's grace, as you know. Hmm. Any explanation? I judge no man in this weather. He had a touch of the sun, I imagine. After you fellows had left, he came over and sat with me on the veranda. He told me he was going home to see his wife. He rambled on tediously. And? I got the apothecary in to look at him, and we tried to make him lie down. After an hour or two, he rubbed his eyes and said he believed it had a fit. Why this unusual interest, I suppose so? All right. I like the man. Go on. He went to his bungalow and began cleaning a rifle. He told the servant he was going to shoot Buck in the morning. Naturally, he fumbled with the trigger and shot himself through the head. Accidentally, of course. That was the report. I'd have wired you, Spurs, though, if you could have done anything. Well, you're a queer one, Hamel. If you'd killed the man yourself, you couldn't have been more quiet about the business. What does it matter? I've, I've got a lot of his overseeing work to do, in addition to my own. I'm the only person that suffers. Jevons is out of it. By pure accident, of course. But out of it. Why didn't you let it go as suicide? Well, there was no direct proof. A man hasn't many privileges in this country, but he might at least be allowed to mishandle his own rifle. Hmm. That's an odd way of putting it. Well, someday I may need a man to smother up an accident to myself. Live and let live. Die and let die. Look here, uh, you take a pill. You're, you're white in the face. Uh, liver out of order. I can't sleep. That's worse. Well, what do you take, Funny? Nothing. I haven't had ten minutes sleep since Friday. Well, I'll patch him up later on. Is it too hot for a ride, do you think? <laughs> it's where to. We shall have to leave by eight. So what is... What is there to do? Hamel? Hey, what's that in the corner? You, you see that? Under those papers and that remnant of cloth. Why? Have you a musical turn? Look. It's a big pipe. What? I wonder if it plays. Oh, it's a wretched instrument. <laughs> How did you come by it? I can't remember. Schumer found it. I should have discarded it long ago. Ha, 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 ha. The touch of hope. <laughs> Can you play glory to thee, my God, this night for all the blessings of the light? That shows we really feel our blessings. <laughs> what an old hypocrite you are, Hummel. Oh, leave that. Leave that him alone. It's associated in my mind with with the most sacred recollections. Summer evenings in the country, stained glass windows, light going down, and you and she jamming your heads together over one hymn book. Now, that'll do, Hummel. You'll see it when you're seven fathoms deep in hell. It's an insult to the deity to pretend we're anything but tortured rebels. Take two pills, Hummel. You're in a vile temper. I'll go see to the dinner. Hey... 
A fear, master. The gut chops are very tough. They tough? Let me see. Where did you get this meat? Who's responsible for this? You do not hunt for a buck. I and know I... that, you fool. I've been ill. Where did you get this execrable piece of hide? I buy from my sister in the village. She raises goats and sells very cheap. Sheep. This isn't fit for a leopard. You've been seeing your meat, Huma. I ought to give you a lashing. Uh, please, master. I will return the money. <laughs> no, master, no. No. <laughs> Stay out of this, Lance. I'm leaving. Now control yourself. Now, no, he's been nasty and insulting since we arrived. Well, he's not well. You can see that. He's feverish. There is no excuse to abuse a servant. We're still supposed to be civilized men. Fever or not, none of us has the right to treat the natives inhumanely. And Kuma's an exceptionally devoted houseboy. Yes, come on. Well, what did you, what did you do to Chuma? Not that it concerns you, Lowndes, but I slapped him. He's been cheating me. I can't offer you dinner. Well, it's just as well. I'm leaving. Uh, I'll ride with you. Well, you're both riding off? Well, no, please. Please stay. I can find food. And... Uh, uh, thank you, no. Hamel, I don't know what's the matter with you. Here to far, I've enjoyed my Sunday visits, but not this one. You've been disagreeable and insulting ever since we arrived. Oh, you're too touchy. And you're rude and scant of courtesy. I, I thank you for your past hospitality. Uh, come along, Sebastian. Oh, first, first, oh, please. Don't leave me. I'm not well. <sighs> All right. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll see you out, Lance. I, I feel... I feel faint. The heat. Come right back, Doctor. I'll certify Hummel for permanent leave. He can't stay here. Well, as you please. Perhaps he'll have an accident. You are angry. Yes, very. You watch yourself. Now, Sebastian, we couldn't do very well without you. Will I see you a week from now? Uh, I don't know. I doubt it. Ah, oh, he'll be different once he's well. I hope you'll reconsider. Mm-hmm. Well, I may. If I were you, Sebastian, I'd dismantle his gardens. Cheerio. That's very good of you to stay on, Sebastian. Oh. I'll have Chuma make up a bed for you. Uh... How do you feel? I feel ill. I can't sleep. Head hot? Throat feeling bulgy? Or... Oh, that's pretty bad. For pity's sake, give me something to put me to sleep. Sound sleep. If it's only for six hours. I haven't been able to sleep for days. I, I, I can't stand it. Mm. Poor chap. I'm nearly mad. For a week, I've had to think and spell out every word that's come through my lips. Isn't that enough to drive a man mad? I can't see correctly. I've, I've lost my sense of touch. My skin aches. Make me sleep. All right, all right. Now, look here. Wait a minute, man. You're pinching my arm. Oh, Please, break I... your neck if you don't give me something. What? No, I, I, I didn't mean that. Don't be angry, Spursto. Oh, what's that? A silver case. Oh, here it is. Containing a needle. It's a thing I hate to use. All right, hold out your arm. Now, in a few minutes, the morphine will begin to work. Lie down, men, and, and wait. I think... I think I'm beginning to go off now. Oh, it's positively heavenly. Suppose so. You must give me that case to keep. You must... You must... You... You must. Uh, Not on your life. And now, my friend, sleeplessness of your kind is apt to relax the moral fiber in matters of life and death. So I shall just take the liberty of spiking your guns. British in India who lived and worked in outposts of civilization, life was arduous. The unrelenting heat was debilitating. The Indians, far from Bombay and Calcutta, were primitive. Life was temporary and cheap. 
As a credit to the British, they worked hard to improve the life of the natives, all the while trying hard to cling to their own more civilized ways. And sometimes they cracked up. I'll return shortly with that. in the temperate zone find it hard to adjust to living under a constant blazing sun, to seasons of violent change, torrential rains, then months of scorching heat. In time, it weakens a man and muddles his mind. His moral fiber weakens. He resents his isolation and may rebel against it by being abusive to those he came out to help. That undoubtedly is what happened to Hummel whom the jungle seems to have driven near mad. Doctor? Spurzo? Where is the man? Oh, Spurzo? What the devil? After my guns, is he? What are you doing, may I ask? Oh, you, you startled me. Well, I should hope so, you fool. Ah, you're lucid again. That's a good sign. Have you finished? Yes, I have. I've taken the cartridges out of your 12 bore. What? I believe in taking precautions when I'm with someone suffering from delirium. Such a man is not to be trusted. Yeah. You seem better. Well, that morphia doesn't work. Generally, I'm quick as lightning, but you... You clogged my feet. I was nearly caught. You were... You were what? Well, a, a place... A place down there... I, I've been afraid of it for months. It's made every night a hell for me. And yet I'm... I'm not conscious of having done anything wrong. Uh, look here. I'll give you another dose. We'll stop your nightmares. Now, tell me exactly what your trouble is. Then will you put me to sleep, Spursto? Put me quite to sleep? If you don't, I'll be caught and die. I, I'll die. Tell me. Well... A blind face that, that cries and, and can't wipe his eyes. A blind face that chases me down corridors. Whose face, Hummel? Put me to sleep. You have the silver case. Yes, right here. You must go on leave, Hummel, as soon as possible. There we are. It occurs to me that unless I drink something, I shall go out before my time. Hot tea, three or four cups. Excellent remedy against heat apoplexy. Doctor, Doctor Sahib. Oh, Shuma. Uh, yes, Master. Well, it's late. I thought you'd left or gone to bed. Did he hurt you? Uh, he said he would lash me. I did not cheat him. My sister... I lash her for selling such old goat meat. No fresh meat. Master does not hunt for many days. Will you prepare some tea for me, Chuma? Yes, yes, I make tea. Thank you. Uh, are you staying on? You go in, big room. I bring the tea. Well, he's asleep in there. Oh, first time in long time, doctor. Yes. Uh, perhaps I should have my tea on the veranda. No, no, no. Do not go on the veranda. Chagales. Oh, 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 jackals, eh? Yeah. They come around? Oh, yes, master. Many jackals will come. Why do you say that? Because those from dark places are in cottage here. Yeah. <clears throat> well, perhaps you're right. But I shall have my tea in here, if I may. Yes. Water will soon boil. You hear? Jackals. Yeah. Can you tell me what happened to Master Jevons? He did. Oh, yes, yes, I know. Shot in head. Master say Jevons sahib. Clean gun and it shot him. He very good hunter. So I understand. Uh, who are those from the, uh, the dark places, Chuma? Evil spirits here in cottage. Maybe I go to sister in the village. No one from a dark places there. Oh, oh. 
Good heavens, it's almost noon. <sighs> Chuma? Chuma? Yes, 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 Master. Yes, yes. It's almost midday. Why didn't you awaken me? Uh, doctor, say you sleep. Why are you cowering? Are you afraid of something? I stay, but do not lash me, Master. Lash you? Got chops, plenty tough, Sahib. I have no idea what you're talking about. Has the doctor ridden off? He on the veranda. Not so hot today. Oh, that will be a blessing. Breakfast, Chuma. Yes, yes, Master. Well, how are you, Humble? Oh, good morning, Doctor. A Chuma asked me not to lash him. What's that about? Do you know? Yes. You were off the rail last night. Oh, I don't remember. You must have had a touch of the sun. You behaved very badly. Lowndes was unforgiving when he rode off. Oh, I'll apologize when he's here next Sunday. Look here, if I write you a medical certificate, will you apply for leave on the spot? No. Why not? You want it? Oh, it won't be so bad now that you've shown me the way. Morphia is an extreme measure. I can't prescribe it as a regular measure. Well, I can always wire you if, it, if I become desperate. Besides, now that I've got into the way of sleeping, it'll be all right. Uh, you wouldn't trust me with your silver case, would you? No. Uh, I feel a new man now, thanks to you, Spursto. You're returning to camp now? Well, I must, but I'll try to look you up every other day. Uh, just what did I do last night, Spursto? Oh, it's best forgotten. No, I'd rather know. Well, you were... Uh, Quarrelsome and insulting to us. Including Chuma? The chops were tough and you lost your temper with him and slapped him. You're fortunate he didn't leave. I am not a cruel man, Spurston. Well, any man can be provoked into cruelty. And you were. By that nightmare of yours, you must remember that. Oh, I'd much rather forget it. You should. <laughs> Oh, daylight is an antidote, and so is morphia. And so is sleep. Rely on a good night's sleep. Here's your horse. Come along now. Yeah. Well, goodbye, Hummel. And do stay indoors. The heat's beginning to build up. Oh, heat. This insufferable heat. What? What in heaven's name is that? Again. I saw it once before when I was suffering from overwork. Chuma? Chuma? Yes, Master, yes. Oh, Master, you come out of some. See it? Look there, huh? on the veranda. Uh, it's nothing there, Sahib. Of course there is. It's a figure of... of myself. You, you are on the veranda, Sahib. <laughs> If the thing slides away from me, all in one piece, like, like a ghost, I'll notice only my eyes and stomach that are out of order, but if it walks, then my head is going. I, I make hot tea, plenty quick, Buster. Help me, Chuma. Yes, yes, we go inside, yes. Yes, it keeps moving away from me. Please, you sit down, Master. I make hot tea. It's dissolving like swimming specks in my eyes. The thing walked away. My mind, my mind, it's going. M master, Master Doctor, Master Doctor. What are you doing here, Shuma? I'm very busy. Oh, Master Bud, you come. No, 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 I can't leave the men. Everyone needs my attention. Oh, Master, see yourself on veranda. Oh, dear. Delirium. He say silver box and get well medicine. Yeah, it's out of the question, Chuma. He'd peg out. Oh, please, doctor, you make him well. I can't help. I'm I'm very sorry. Uh, look, give him plenty of hot tea and make him lie down. He afraid. They catch him. Go to the apothecary. Tell him to see Master Hummel. I I simply cannot leave, Chuma. Uh, do the best you can. I'll be by on Sunday, not before. Chuma 
come, Master. Oh, where's the doctor? No, he, he not come. Cooley, sick. Doctor cannot leave. He come, he say, by end of week. I go to apothecary. He say he not come. I'll have his bloody throat, the swine. Why did the apothecary say he wouldn't come? Not understand, Master. Did he say something about... About Jevons? Dead. Buried somewhere. I know that. What did he say? Uh, only that Jevons is dead and buried somewhere. What else did he say? Uh, only him dead. He shot himself. Accidentally. Y- yes, 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 Master. Yes, Master. Yes, Master. I said ring your scrawny neck. I make tea and fix up dinner. I don't care what you do. No, you, you lie down. Feel lot better, Master. <laughs> It's walking through the room. I am walking through the room. I see it walking away with its back to me. My figure. I see it. And, and isn't that Lowndes? Lowndes? Jevons, as I recall, was a good man with a rifle. Oh, yes. Quite expert. Does a man who is good with arms accidentally kill himself? Oh, yes. Yes, accidentally. But he wanted to write a report stating that it was suicide. I remember saying so to you and Spurso. You overruled him? Well, there was no evidence to prove suicide. Did you quarrel with the apothecary? I'm in charge of this section of the railroad line. What you say is law. In a sense, yes, I am the law. You discovered the body? Yes, I and his houseboy. You saw Jennings the week before. He appeared in good health. The onset of fever and cholera can be swift. He suffered from cholera. He was dead. But the symptoms... No determination was made. The apothecary must have had an opinion. You'll have to ask him. There was no autopsy. Out here, that's rare. Men go out like flies. Why are you asking me all these questions, Lowndes? Last Sunday, you acted very strange. I haven't slept for a long time. Yes. That could explain it. of me, as if I'd stepped out of my body. It walked past me, and then it walked out. Oh, my eyes. Spots darting around in my eyes. Oh, I can't bear it much longer. Spurs, I need you. Juma, Juma, help hey, me. Come, I come with she, Master. Oh, I'm come with she. I'm frightened. No, no, Master. You stay out of shot. I can't run fast enough. Mr. Lowndes is chasing me. Tell him not to chase me. Tell yes, him. Yes, yes, Master. Yes, I, I tell can't him. run any faster. My feet are heavy. I'm afraid you are. Please, you lie down, Master. You sleep. I can't sleep. When I try, it runs after me. Master Lowndes, not here. Not Lowndes. Who said anything about Lowndes? Not Lowndes. It's some... Thing that chases me, don't you understand? Yes, yes, yes Master. Yes. Who, who, who is it? Do you know? Those from dark places, Master. Man is resilient. His body can endure great hardships. What sustains him is a sound, clear mind. When that slips, for whatever reason, his mind becomes his enemy. Physical pain is not as devastating as mental torment. And that is what has driven Hummel to the edge of insanity. I will return shortly with Act 3. W.J. Detroit. Richard Kipling was born in Bombay in 1865. When he returned from school in England, he was 17, 
and his father, then curator of the museum in Lahore, got him a job as assistant editor of the Civil and Military Gazette. It was during his leisure that he began to write his stories of India. His information was firsthand. Often at night, he said, he would wander till dawn in all manner of odd places, in and about the narrow gullies under the mosque of Wazir Khan. And he met the soldiery. His stories ring true. He knew his subjects. He knew Hummel. The following Sunday, Spursto reigns in his horse and... Ah, oh, Lord! Pull up! Oh, no, Bottom. Uh, he was that he's still stuck out in the desert. Hey, let's pull up for a few minutes, eh? Just like a cigarette. Well, any word about Hummel? No, I was unable to visit him. The, the coolies were too sick. I didn't think I'd see you today. As I decided the last minute. Any change out here is welcome. Even if it means holding my tongue when Hummel is abusive. Um, quite right, too. Well, it's a change for a day, and it's good for our pent-up frustrations. Oh, yes, I have plenty of those. As a doctor, you can do something for those who are ill. I'm supposed to minister to the body politic. I tell you what, it's all most hopeless. Old Timberside's acting up again. Well, yes, it's one miserable intrigue after another. Well, you know, he has absolutely no interest in improving the lot of the natives. Will it ever change? Oh, no, no, no. Not in my lifetime. I should tackle the king with a light hand, Lowndes. They'll hate you quite enough under any circumstances. No, it's weary work. <laughs> I'd sooner be with you, Spastro. Oh, would you? Mm. I don't think so. Oh, really bad week. Oh, very. But I'm happy to see you, truly. Well, we're here, and that's reassuring. As you know, there are very many places in the East where it's not good or kind to let your acquaintances drop out of sight, even for one short week. <laughs> yeah, that's really why I decided to ride in. Hubble may be well enough to join us. He's had a week to recover. The apothecary probably fixed him up. Oh, no, yes, he's a conscientious man. I'd say so, yes. He wanted to certify Jevin's death as suicide. I wonder what really did happen. Well, accidental death is a more dignified way of going out. I'm inclined to believe it's the truth. Jevin's wasn't suicidal. No, no. But, of course, there's another alternative. No. No, that's imagining it. And couldn't be true. Hello, Juma. You come in cottage, yes? Yes, of course. Uh, something wrong here, Spurser. Where's your master, Juma? He descended to dark places. There he was caught, not able to escape with sufficient speed. Dead? You come. Yes, I'll have a look at him. He may be just asleep. Master Hummel, there on bed. Hmm. Yes, he's dead. Poor chap. How long, Spurster? Oh, the body's too warm. A few hours. Cholera? No. He had fever and he was being ridden by a nightmare. And it uh, pursued him in the dark places. What kind of nonsense is that? He was afraid to fall asleep. That's about all I can tell you, Lance. That night I spent with him... Very trying, by the way. He told me that a blind face that cries and cannot wipe its eyes... A blind face chased him down corridors. I suspect that his years out here, the remorseless heat, the unrewarding work building the rail line... Poor food. All of those began to affect his mind. Yes, 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 yes. yes. His mind was wandering, but uh, dark places? No, no, that's superstitious and ignorant. Well, to us, it's not to the natives. You heard, Chuma. He also told me that there were evil spirits in the cottage. Oh, what rubbish. Look at Hummel's eyes. Good Lord. Shut his eyelids. Spurster, I can see hell in those eyes. Shut them, I implore you. Chuma. Yes, doctor. 
When did your master go to bed? Eleven or twelve. He was well then? <laughs> How should you know? No, he, he was not ill. He did not sleep for three nights. This I know. I see him walking much very late in the night. What do you think, Chuma? Uh, he descended into dark places. He not able to escape with sufficient speed. Um, go out and prepare the seals to be set on the sahib's property. I tell other servants to stay away until you... Until you reckon tale of sahib's property. They are all thieves and they would steal. Oh, what did he die of, Spursa? Hmm. As far as I can make out, he died from... Oh, anything. Stoppage of the heart's action. Heat apoplexy. Or some other visitation. Well, he certainly was scared to death. Look at those eyes. Uh, no, no, I just I cover up the face. Is there any fear on earth that can turn a man into that likeness? It is ghastly. Please, Bursto, cover it up. No fear on earth. Hmm. Well, it'll take a half a day to knock together any sort of coffin. Uh, tell the coolies to break ground next to Jevin's grave. Uh, yes, yes, I'll see to it at once. I have set seals and master's property. Ah, good man, Juma, thank you. Uh, evil spirits, Sahib, have been in cottage. They have gone now. From which I infer that they have made their way into Hummel and will be buried with him. Do you want tea and food, Doctor? You have come a long way. Uh, t t tea, yes, yes, please. No food. I, I have no appetite, Juma. What happens to you? Well, maybe Sahib who takes master's place, he will keep me on. Otherwise, I return to my sister in the village. Uh, excuse, please. Excuse, oh, what is that? Hey. Oh, this, a camera. Yes, it is black box. Yes, it, it takes pictures. I, I go to boil water for tea. I think you should go veranda. I serve you there. I really wonder, could I capture that on film? Spurster? Right here, on the veranda. I say you've got too much stirred up. That black box of yours, what is it? You know how the natives feel about pictures. Yes, yes, of course, the camera's an instrument of the devil. It imprisons their faces on film and captures their souls. Yes, well, I respect that. So, so do I. What's this got to do with the picture I might take of the late Hummel? Well, uh, there's something grisly about it, for one thing. And, uh, well, Tuma's afraid that the picture would capture the evil ones. And, and, and I just don't like it. It isn't in medical science. What isn't? Things in a dead man's eyes... You saw them? Oh, for goodness sake. Leave that horror alone. I've seen a native die of pure fright when a tiger chivied him. I ain't know what killed Hummel. Indeed. Well, I'm going to try to see. Uh, tea and a biscuit and some sliced meat, Sahib. Uh, excellent. Thank you, Chuba. And the doctor? Uh, he'll be here directly. Here's with the master. He has black box. Oh, no. Good. Good Lord, that's Hummel's voice. But Hummel's dead. Spasto! 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 I'm... I'm all right. Yes, yes, I heard. Yes, yes, yes. You... you took a picture. Oh, it was impossible, of course. What will it look like? I've destroyed the film. There was nothing to photograph. And you smashed the camera. I didn't. We'd better leave, Lance. Go back to work. I've written the death certificate. Uh, yes, I have my horse. Yes, we can pick them up when we come back for the burial. We'll leave them at the station. Did you take a picture? I told you it was impossible. That's a lie. Just what did happen? 
I distinctly heard Hamel shriek as if he as if he were being burned in hell. I really don't remember any part of it. I don't believe you. My dear fellow, let's forget it, shall we? We're in, in such a, a state now that we'd believe anything. Was it Jevons? I beg your pardon. Do you believe that Jevons died accidentally? Or was it suicide? Well, we have Hummel's report about that. Jevons fumbled the trigger on his gun. Uh, there is an alternative, isn't there? I never realized that you have such a vivid imagination. So I'm just trying to be rational. Well? Without evidence, I haven't the vaguest idea. What do you infer? Let me answer it this way, Lance. Uh, and I'm not being facetious. There may be heaven, there must be hell. Meanwhile, there is our life here. Lowndes had made up his mind. The death of the job contractor, Jevons, broke Hummel's spirit and mind because Hummel murdered him. But did he? Death was certified as accidental. Was it? No one will ever know. And Kipling leaves it up to us to reach our own conclusion. The one fact we have is that Hummel's deterioration followed soon after Jevons died. That preyed on Hummel's mind. He couldn't sleep. He was pursued by a thing with a blind face. And it caught up with him. I'll be back shortly. Dr. Spursto experience when he took that picture of Hummel's eyes. Did an ectoplasmic Hummel reach out from the image on the negative? Is that why there was that thrashing about noise? Your guess is as good as mine. Is it all improbable? The painter Matisse once showed a picture to a visitor who said, I've never seen a woman like that. To which he replied, It isn't a woman, madam. It's a picture. If a painter is permitted certain distortions, why not the writer of fiction? Our cast included John Beale, Court Benson, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. This must have been made by one of the master carvers. And the age of it. 19th Dynasty, am I right? The original probably was. This five-foot-five statue is a copy? Yeah, from the Edwards collection. Oh, even copies aren't cheap. I don't know what to tell you, Ramsey. It's a physical impossibility for this statue to move. You must have imagined it. I didn't. I tell you, it's physical.